we ever going to see that Mir Lesnar trilogy? We're one and one. I would like to. It's something I'm always game for. I mean, hell, if he showed up right now at lunch, I'd fight him. <laughs> Universe, how are you? It's a very exciting day. We're here in Las Vegas. We're getting ready to go talk to one of the greatest UFC fighters of all time, one of my personal favorites, Frank Mir. Now check this out. Frank has a very inspirational tale of how he overcame a motorcycle crash. We're going to talk to him all about it. As for now, we're headed over to Syndicate MMA because Frank invited us over to check out the pro class. Come on, let's go. Well, Cycle Drag Universe, it is not every day you are joined by one of the greatest MMA fighters, one of the greatest heavyweights of all time. Ladies and gentlemen, 19 wins, nine subs. It is the one and only Frank Mir. Thanks so much, Frank. I really appreciate it. Now, from a motorcycle standpoint, many of you in the know may know this story, but some of you may not. Frank had one of the most inspirational comebacks, and it stemmed from a horrible incident in 2004. Frank, tell me about what happened. Uh, you know, basically, it was right before my wedding. Uh, my brother picked me up. We were going to go hang out and do a uh, go for a ride before I left town. Uh, I had a Jigster 1000. He goes, hey, we're going to go for a ride. Let's just take off here literally before we go to work. So we took off. My gas light came down. Uh, and so, so I saw it. I was like, hey, I told my brother we need to stop and get gas. So at that moment, we were actually riding like dicks. But at that moment, we had chilled out, you know. So I had my forearm on the gas tank just cruising, probably going 35 miles an hour. And as we went through an intersection, the light turned yellow. And the guy took a left-hand turn in front of us. So I, 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 my brother was behind me somewhere on my left side. So I didn't just zip behind him because I didn't know where he was and I was gonna take out his front tire. So uh, I jumped on the front bike, the hand of the brake, and uh, I started to kind of lean forward. I'm like, shit, I'm stopping really fast. Hope no one's behind us because now I'm gonna get ran over that way. Uh, but then I seen the car front dip down too. So I'm like, oh, they're realizing they screwed up. So they're going to stop. So now I don't have to stop so quickly that someone rear ends me. I let off the front bank, and when my back tire finally hit the ground again, I started to take off. But then I think he thought the same thing when he saw me stop. He was like, oh, okay, I can go. So we both basically just ran right into each other. He clipped me on the side, broke my femur, dislocated my hip, tore my knee up pretty bad. It threw me for about 80 feet, which they said was like the average punt of an NFL, uh, uh, NFL punt. So so uh, I was hurt pretty bad. The, the, the craziest part about it, everybody goes, hey, did you lose conscious? I'm like, no, man, I saw the hood of the guy's car. I looked over. I just remember thinking, oh, tumble. Because when I hit the ground, I didn't want to you know, hurt my neck. So as I was going through, I've been doing tumbling and martial arts my whole life since I was four years old. So I was able to tumble when I hit the ground and rolled into the sidewalk, bounced off of that. I was wearing an Araya helmet, which that probably saved Thank me. God. Thank yeah, God. Actually, yeah. cement lodged into it. We were looking after we got it back from the hospital, you know, where I checked out. My wife still to this day has cement lodged in the back of it, or the back of my head hit the sidewalk. So I was like, well, that was a good thing because I'd have been a vegetable, you know, or if I survived it. But the, the worst part, the funny part was when I sit there, I was sitting there, I remember I was telling my brother, I'm like, I just need a minute, man. He goes, are you all right? I'm like, I just need a minute. I think I can stand up. I'm just, I feel like I took a really bad leg kick. So I'm sitting there and I kept trying to sit up and not. My femur, because it was snapped, my body just basically was shutting down, not letting me move, which was probably a good thing because if I had a torn my femoral artery, I wouldn't be here. So I kept trying to sit up. I'm like, man, I just don't know why, man. I kept looking at my brother, like, I can't get up. And so that's when the paramedics got there, and I explained to them. And then one of the paramedics actually recognized me. I just won the heavyweight title. And he's like, hey, man, I'm like, you know, what's going on? I was like, I just can't get up, man. I, just, I know I've been saying this for the last five, ten minutes, man. I just, I just need a minute, I guess, you know? So the guy was literally, he goes, hey, was one leg longer than the other? And I'm all, no. He goes, all right, your femur's broken, and we're going to put you in traction. So at that moment, all of a sudden, they got real serious. The joke stopped. Uh, they started cutting all my clothes off and then put me in traction and, and, and right there on the lawn of this, uh, the apartment complex. And then I was on my way to the hospital going to surgery. 
Truly amazing, and we're so glad you're still here because yeah. many, many share this story that are no longer with us anymore. And there's one misconception too that speed is always a factor. You yeah. said you were only going 35 miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, the thing is, the thing with motorcycles, it, that's probably why my wife gets nervous now. Even when I go ride, she always wants to ride with a bunch of people. She likes now that I have a Harley because, you know, being loud. She says, I'm not worried about you. I'm just worried about everybody else. And she has a lot of, you know, truth to that. That's why, like, now when you talk about going to a track and stuff, you know, even going fast, that wouldn't scare her. She's like, well, you're just you on the track. Everybody else is paying attention. I'm like, yeah, but then we're good. She's just worried. I mean, we have friends that have been sitting at stoplights, not moving, going zero miles an hour, and cars just you know, smash them from behind and they end up breaking their backs and everything else. So. But that's cool that you still ride. You mentioned yeah. you have a Harley. This was a GSXR that you were on at the yeah. time, right? So you love the sport bikes, right? I do. I, and, and look, here's my thing. My personality, I can't own a sports bike and not go fast. It's just it's not going to happen. My wife knows. Because you know, when I first bought it the first time, I was like, oh, she's why do you have a bike that can do what it, you know, because she's looking at the different numbers on it. I'm like, oh, I can do this. I'm going to put a chip in it, a Yoshi pipe. And she's like, why? <laughs> oh, I just like the idea that it can go fast. Sure. And she's like, okay. And then sure enough, after I got the, the wreck, even though at that point when I wasn't going fast, all the stories, my buddies were like, oh, yeah, fucking mirror was going 170 and it's going <laughs> cutting traffic. And my wife's like, you did what? And so then everybody really was like, well, okay, well, you're not right anymore. So now we'll go ahead and go spill the beans. I'm like, I guess. <laughs> was, did you take any flack? I remember when Ben Roethlisberger was at the top of his game. He went out on the high boost. and got into an accident. And the coaches weren't happy. You were the champ. You were the UFC champion. Was Dana White, was anybody hard on you for riding a motorcycle? Not necessarily hard. I was 24 years uh, at the time uh, of age, but just kind of like, Hey man, you're a professional athlete. Why are you on the back of a bike flying around? Like, you know, and they saw it, and, and they were just, you know, it's kind of hard to say. Like, I, I showed up a photo shoot for the helmet and a, and, a, and a riding jacket. Everybody knew I had a bike, you know. And so, um, you know, after that, it was pretty much like, hey, if you want to continue with us, no more bikes. And uh, I kind of snuck it and got a Harley, and no one ever said nothing to me. But I think the mentality was a little bit different, you know. You know, more of a cruiser type, you know. And not that it has to be a Harley. I mean, anything, but just more of a cruiser mentality than than a, than a power bike. Your jujitsu training, just unbelievable. I, I heard you say in one of the interviews, you knew you were in trouble. You thought you might bleed out, so yeah. you said you were slowing down your breathing. Yeah. I mean, to me, that that is such a warrior mentality to be able to remain that calm in a situation where you think you might die. Yeah, I've had friends actually. We were just having a discussion with military guys, and they're saying, "Hey, I've been in a situation like that. People know they're about to die. They start praying. They start doing these things. What did you do?" I'm like, I "Pray." You know, I actually started just going, "Hey." Uh, I'm in this by myself, and I better take care of this by myself. The only thing I have control over now is my breathing. So I'll slow my heart rate down as much as I can to give myself as much time as possible. So when I sat there, the guy goes, hey, and I stopped talking. Like, hey, a couple times the guy even asked me if I was okay. Like, Are you still with us? I'm like, yeah, man, I'm just trying to relax. <laughs> just trying to breathe through this and just, get as, you know, just try to be as calm as possible so I don't bleed out. You battled back to have one of the most amazing careers ever. What was the most difficult part of your rehab? when you decided, because a lot of people, I mean, the fighting career would have been over right then and there. You were determined. You reinvented yourself. You had such a resurgence. You went on to have so many big victories. What was the most yeah, win difficult the part? Yeah. Win the title again. Um, it's probably the hardest part was the psychological aspect of like, hey, at that moment, whenever I worked hard, um, things paid off for me. You know, if you go to the gym and lift, you get stronger. So I think a lot of people, when you say, hey, if you put in the work, the dividends will come back. That was the first time in my life that I had to deal with psychologically. They're like, hey, I might work as hard as any human being in the world right now, and I still might walk with a limp. I might not ever fight again. Um, the dividends might not come. You know, what I'm putting into this might not come back. And that was a hard thing to accept not to quit. There were some times when I just, I don't want to do this anymore. You know, my wife and my children inspired me to keep on going because of those times I'm just like, you know what? Why? Why give 100% effort for a 2% result? This is the, almost a, you know, an insane type of mentality. And then, you know, they wouldn't let me quit and I kept pushing and eventually came back. Well, like I said, it's truly amazing what you've been able to do. Thanks, and I have a pitch for you. I say you love fast sport bikes. We got to get you out of the drag strip. He just asked me, is it okay for big guys? We got a heavyweight class. There's grudge bikes out there. And here's what you like about the drag races. Nobody's going to pull out in front of you. We got an ambulance at the end of the track. You got to have your safety gear on. The bikes have to be up to snuff. So right, I think I'm you in. could do it. And I especially see you working the gas, all the finesse that that takes. Those are the skills that you have.
So. Uh, definitely, yeah. If I get some good instructions, I know what I'm doing. Hey, I think. Do we have any volunteers to teach this legend? I love it, man. This has been so great. I really appreciate you taking the time. Last thing, I got to sneak in there. What do you think? We ever, uh, we ever going to see that Mir Lesnar trilogy? We're one and one. I would like to. It's something I'm always game for. I mean, hell, if he showed up right now at lunch, I'd fight him. <laughs> Boy, I'd be at the right place at the right time with the camera then. Frank, thanks so much again. What an awesome story. Glad you're here. Best of luck in everything you do, guys. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. We're going to see him at the drag strip hopefully soon. Let's get him there. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. If you're ever in Vegas, make sure you check out Syndicate Mixed Martial Arts. And I really want to thank Frank. What a down-to-earth humble guy it was great chatting with him and expounding on this a little bit guys remember ufc got him the best doctors possible tom brady's doctor helped work on frank and there were many doctors who said he would never compete again not only did he compete again he went on to be ufc champion again he tapped out brock lesnar he's had so many great accomplishments it's truly an honor to talk to him and what do you guys think can we get him to the drag strip? He seems pretty excited. We may have to talk his wife into it, but somebody out there, maybe we can get him to Ricky Gadsden's school. I think with his jujitsu skill set, he would take right to motorcycle drag racing. Well, again, guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you love MMA, if you love motorcycles, this is your channel. Subscribe, be a friend, tell a friend, and you know, if there's anything fast motorcycles involved or MMA champions, we are in cycle drag rolls on.